Hi, this is Terry Mead. Welcome back to my channel. If you watched the episode from just a couple of days ago, you might have noticed that last week was kind of a rough week for me. Actually, it was a rough week for several of us around here and in my circles. Since then, I started to think about um, what's important in my life and about legacy, especially since this morning I was sending some birthday cards out, sending a couple of Valentines out, and a couple of um, I'm thinking about you cards. And it's something that I do on a regular basis. And this got me thinking about legacy in terms of how do I want to be remembered? It was funny when I mentioned this to Ray. Ray, what was the question you asked me? Why do we want to be remembered at all? Which I think is a very interesting question, but I think it's also a question that comes from a 15 year old, and maybe it's a Gen Z thing, but it's definitely a, I think a younger person's question. A lot of the research that I did for my book, Piloting Your Life, um, brought up the idea of those of us in midlife are looking to figure out how we want to be remembered, what our legacy is going to be, and uh, we also want to make sure that what we're doing actually matters. And a lot of people in midlife, you know, in their 40s are starting to ask the questions around, you know, is this all there is? What can I be doing something more? And is this what I want to be doing for the rest of my life? Which brings us back around to really legacy. What do I want to be remembered for? I mean, there are basic things that I want to be remembered for. I want to be thought uh, remembered for being kind and thoughtful and generous. I want my kids to love me. I want the people around me who care about me to uh, feel that they've been loved and touched by me in a positive way. Um, I have a greater vision where I want to live in a world where everyone has uh, the opportunity to live equally, freely, and uh, have an extraordinary life. That's uh, kind of my big vision that I came up with a couple years ago on my birthday. I think it was my 48th birthday. And from that, I created two North Star goals. Well, I created three, and I might have mentioned them before. One was I wanted to uh, move the needle on leveling the playing field. Uh, the second one was leveraging data and technology to flip healthcare on its head. I think I remember talking about not necessarily being in the right place to be able to influence that. So I'm going to have to be thinking about that. And the third one is just to not raise asshole kids. And um, once again, I think we're doing okay on that one too. Let's hope so. <laughs> uh, feedback so far has been good. Um, but in terms of um, how I want to be remembered, it also got me thinking about how we spend our time. And I think as I was writing notes and I've been thinking about boundaries and uh, really trying to make sure that I'm allocating time to the people who really matter to me and the people that I really truly love and want to influence. I heard a term energy vampires and it's really easy for us to say yes to things that you know we don't necessarily want to because we're saying yes out of obligation or um, well, most of the time out of obligation, like we don't really have a choice and a lot of times we do. It's a matter of being um, disciplined and also respecting yourself and respecting those around you. Um, pretty sure I talked about that in a previous episode as well. And I hate to repeat myself, but these are things that I continually think about in terms of asking myself, am I spending time with the right people? Am I making sure that the people who should feel it are feeling loved and appreciated? And uh, this is really important to me and this is part of how I want to be remembered. And it's also how I want to contribute to the world. It's really important for me to create space and create time for the important things, people, activities in my life. And 2020 has been, uh, continues to be about, uh, in January, letting go of what no longer serves me, uh, taking chances, being brave, which also includes saying no to things that I don't want to do, even though I feel compelled to do them, and then saying yes to things. And the good news is that for a while there, I was just declining everything, and I didn't want to necessarily schedule anything, respond to people's emails. And I finally feel like I'm in a better place to be able to 
um, get back out there, spend time with people and actually make commitments that I don't want to break at the very last minute. I don't know if anybody else does that, but it, my husband gives me a bad time because I'm super optimistic and I say yes to things. And then when the time comes, sometimes I'm just not feeling up to it. And, uh, I kind of call it an inertia problem. I don't want necessarily to, you know, get out of yoga stuff, put on the makeup, do my hair and, um, put forth the social energy. Sometimes that's a bit of a hurdle, but I think it's really important that we do step up sometimes. I mean, there are a lot of times that we can just hunker down and um, sit on the couch, watch some Netflix and, um, you know, I don't know, eat Cheerios out of a box. (laughs) What would one do? Been there. Been there. Um, And just avoid. And especially right now where there are a lot of energy vampires in terms of um, some of the political stuff that's going on, the social stuff that's going on. Um, I know that when there are some bad things going on around it, um, as somebody who's highly empathic, I feel it a lot and it makes it really challenging. Um, but it's between yoga and meditation and, um, also making better choices about how I'm allocating my time. I'm finding that getting out and being with people is better than, um, me hiding and trying to avoid all of it. So in light of some of the recent bad news around some, um, deaths of some family friends and some people that I went to high school with, um, And in seeing what somebody posted on Facebook this morning, which was, and I'm going to read this, when I die, I don't want flowers. I don't want tears. I certainly don't want people flying to come and say goodbye. If you love me that much, what are you waiting for? Send me flowers now. Come see me now. Please don't wait till I'm gone. Love me today. And I'm taking that to heart. So thank you, Lisa Tori, for putting that out there on uh, Facebook this morning. Because I think that's one of the things that also got me thinking about how important it is to be with people that you love and care about now. And then um, ask, to be, ask to have people to be with you. I love the, the ask for something. And um, today is Monday when I'm recording this. And the one brave thing for today is to ask for help. So ask other people for what it is that you want from them in terms of their time, their love, their attention, and make sure that you're getting it now and make sure that you're giving it now. Ooh, that sounds like a lecture. That wasn't exactly what I wanted to do, but I just want to make sure to emphasize how important it is that we focus on the here and now and spreading as much love and goodness out into the world as possible. Not just because it's February and Valentine's Day is coming up. Because that is a commercialized holiday that is... Uh, just a pain and at the same time it can act as a reminder that we need to be um as i said in last week's in flight that we need to be spreading that love shit around as much as we possibly can so with that ray am i missing anything Um, or do you have anything to add or shall we just go spend some extra time together I'm going to have to do my homework, so... Well, I'm getting out of here, too, so um, with that... Oh, a thing. Don't forget to not only love everyone around you and be loved by everyone around you, but also love yourself. That's that's a biggie. Ooh, I love that. Take some time out for you and take some time to, uh, yeah, love on yourself and, you know, however you want to take that. So thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And we love your comments. Uh, Thanks for the comments received this past couple of days. I've responded to all of them. So until Saturday, um, take some risks, let go of perfection, and above all else, have fun.